in the previous video we discussed the summary of the play let me die yellow by john close we also discussed uh, the major characters and characterization in another video also we discuss the minor characters and also the themes and the thematic analysis uh, we have discussed them in another video all the videos are in the channel english literature online class so if you have not watched them before search the channel and get them you watch them so that you have full understanding of the one we are going to be discussing today uh, the significant incident and their importance in john kolosakago's let me die alone uh, it is important for you to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you will get notified when another video is uploaded in this channel we dwell and concentrate on analyzing literary texts plays uh, novels uh, poems and even literary review of other uh, literature so in this video we will be looking at John Kulusa Kagbo's Let Me Die Alone. As I said earlier, we have already discussed the plot analysis, the themes, and the characterization. And this one we'll be looking at some of the incidents that are worth mentioned in the play. Uh, for the benefit of those who have no knowledge of the plot analysis before, the play is about a heroine and a king uh, which we have discussed before so i think you should check it and then um, watch the videos and uh, you will have more understanding of it so we have several incidents in the play and uh, uh, we'll be looking at them one after another now uh, we have Yoko's plans expansionist war. This is one of the major significant incidents in the play. Uh, we, when the husband who was the king died, uh, Madame Yoko Hunam became the king. Uh, plan expansionist uh, war. Her plan is to expand the chiefdom to expand the territory even when the chief warrior Undapi was avarice to her ambition was not so excited fighting and extending territories uh, instead of living uh, in peace with neighbors so but Madame Yoko wishes to expand the territory and then uh, she ruled over several other chiefdoms later so the way it is done in the traditional society in Senegal uh, chiefdom at that time is that when you are a chief of a village and you conquer the next village the subject the people in that village will also become part of your territory they will be paying tax homage and other necessary things that are paid to the to the chief or to the head of the community so we saw that yoko wants to embark on expansionist war but some of her warlord feel otherwise like undapi and lavalai who are warriors especially uh, strategize on how to stop yoko from embarking on war the plan to stop yoko both may review yoko's greed for war which they consider vain and provocative so yoko insists on embarking on the war and eventually yoko embarks on the war and extends the territory to another place now the extension of the territory the expansionist war also have its own significance and one of the significant of it is that uh, the reign of Madame yoko is airborne and then the desire to expand her chiefdom is her main agenda 
So after being given the, the, the leadership of the Senate chiefdom, she probably believes that the more territory she controls, the more economic returns for her chiefdom. She is very interested in wealth creation, and um, unfortunately, some of her warlords, the chief warriors, consider the expansionist war as senseless and needless. Things that are not needed at that time, but Madan Yoko also felt otherwise and wishes to continue with the war. And let's look at another uh, significant incident in the play. We also have Madan Yoko move the palace from Senem to Moyamba. Uh, Moyamba is one of the village in the Senem province also. So the Senem chiefdom consists of a cluster of villages. The center village is also called Senem. So Banyahu was the former chief rose from Senem. And after his death, uh, his wife, Madan Yoko, who took over the throne and moved the palace to Moyamba village and ruled from there. Now, scores of women rejoice with her decision and they all like the idea of the palace being in Moyamba. But few of the chiefs who were men uh, were not so comfortable with the movement of the palace to Moyamba. But we saw that uh, one of the reasons or one of the significant, uh, the important thing uh, in the movement of the palace from, uh, from Seneum to Moyamba is the passion to develop more areas in the Seneum chiefdom. The Seneum chiefdom, as I said earlier, is a cluster of villages. Seneum is one of the villages, Moyamba is another village, and we have other villages in the Senem uh, chiefdom. So I think one of the important things in the movement of the palace to Moyamba is the desire of the chief, Chief Madanyoko, to develop different villages of the Moyamba chief of the Senem chiefdom. You see that uh, the Senem village who was considered as headquarters during the reign of Banya was well developed traditionally, but uh, the other villages were lacking behind. And that could be one of the reasons why um, Madan Yoko moved the palace to Moyamba. The other likely reason, again, is because she was the first woman to rule in the Senem chiefdom and because of some of the chiefs are not comfortable with her being on the throne it could be one of the reason why to start afresh and to make history and having the palace in another uh, in another uh, village in the senior children so let's look at um, another one G gino loses three months old pregnancy Yes, Jilo is the wife of uh, Ondapi, the chief warrior. We have discussed this extensively in the characters and characterization. You can search for the video on the channel and watch. So, Jilo's three-month-old pregnancy is also wasted because of the illicit act. Because she had sexual affair with Lansana, and that is a crime. It is abomination according to the tradition of the Senem people and that led to the uh, miscarriage of the pregnancy. So Yoko is visibly angry uh, more than ever because a taboo has been committed that is Lasana and Jilo having sexual affair. Also Lasana betrayed his friendship with Undabi who is the chief warrior and uh, had sexual affair with his wife. So this is also a significant incident because the tradition frowned at, uh, uh, at adultery and even fornication. Any sexual affair outside marriage or outside between a married man and a married woman is frowned at, is a taboo that uh, needs not to be committed by the people in the village. So. You can see the importance on the screen. Jilo's aborted pregnancy also represents an aborted dream of Yoko who wants to erect probably 
um, a new social structure as other in the Senegal children. And probably this is why she is visibly angry. And interestingly, Lansana and Odapi are friends. So you can see it is a form of betrayal from Lansana having sexual affair with the wife of Undapi. So let's look at another important um, major incident in the play. We have Lamboy takes charge of the chiefdom in Yoko's absence. Yes. Now, when Yoko was sent to go and install other kings in Tayama chiefdom, Lamboy, he, he, she handed over the uh, the throne to Lamboy to govern to her return. And we saw from what happened when Yoko, my mother Yoko left. So we saw that uh, Lamboy and uh, Musa conspired together to have Madame Yoko removed as the chief. So if you haven't watched the plot analysis, please try and watch it. You will have full detail of what happened when Lamboy was given the staff of authority to govern the Senegal chiefdom in the absence of Madame Yoko. So we also saw that uh, the handing over of the chiefdom to Lamboy was Madame Yoko's greatest mistake and tragic flaw. So no, we saw that Lamboy take effective advantage of this opportunity and plan to remove Madame Yoko. Now in the Shakespearean play, uh, you will have one tragic flaw that will lead to your downfall. Though the uh, one of the tragic flaw of Madame Yoko and even Chief Banya, the former chief, in this play is trust. Yes, you can say can trust to be a tragic flaw because it is not a crime or something unacceptable. Yeah, it is not a crime or unacceptable. But in this play, trust is a tragic flaw because Madame Yoko trusts Lamboy and Musa, Lamboy especially, and that was why she handed over the throne to him. But no, he betrayed her. And also Chief Banya, the former chief also trusts the chief priest, which is Musa, and he administered um, a pain relief uh, concussion to him. Ahmad and Chibaya does not know that it was a poison. So trust was a one was a major flaw uh, for all the for all the major characters, the chiefs in the play. Then um, let's look at another one. We have the search for Geneva's whereabouts. Now Geneva missed. Uh, Lamboy and Musa conspired and took Geneva and killed her and buried her in a shallow grave. And when the mother, Jilo, and the father, Undapi, uh, came to the palace and told the queen, uh, Madame Yoko, that uh, Geneva is missing, we saw that the people organized a search party and they searched for Geneva everywhere and could not find her. So what does that represent and what is the importance of that, you know, is Chief Yoko's response to the news of Geneva's disappearance uh, is, uh, is commendable and proactive. You no know, rumor wears a conflicting garment of reality and the feeble-minded admire such easily and that is the tragic capital uh, Lamboy and Musa are exploiting. So, because of time, let's look at another one. The governor, Rowell, reduces Yoko's territorial control. Yes, this is one of the reasons why Madame Yoko's depression got worse. So, the messenger of the governor brought a letter or a message to the queen. At the Boro Bush, we have discussed Boro before. Boro is a secret court. And um, that was one of the reasons why Madame Yoko also got so depressed. So, uh, again, let's look at another one. Okay, you can check the importance of this. You can also pause the video and check. And um, this uh, will stop here for today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel.